Our next speakers for today, we have Chandani Manwani, Software Development Manager, and Shakti Ramalingam, Architect and Developer from Tesco. A quick info on Chandani, Software Development Manager at Tesco. She is a passionate technologist with experience across retail, investment banking, and telecom domains, building and maintaining highly scalable enterprise applications ground up. Shakti Ramalingam, architect and developer at Tesco. Shakti is an enthusiast engineer and technologist as he holds master degree in computer application with 18 plus years of experience working across multiple domains, retail, healthcare, inventory management, telecom, ERP systems, designing and developing highly scalable enterprise systems and services. Their topic for today is ML DevOps and Predictive Asset Analytics. Hello everyone. I am Chani, Software Development Manager at Tesco. Hi, I am Shakti, Senior Architect at Tesco. And today we are going to talk about ML DevOps and predictive asset analytics. Well, in today's scenario, it becomes very hard not to talk about COVID. From this entire COVID-19 pandemic, it is the huge realization that not only preventive care and awareness go hand in hand with curative care, but also the fact that preventing the illness is much more cost effective than treating the illness. What does this even have to do with DevOps? Well, in our opinion, it does. Preventing an incident in a business critical application rather than addressing it post the downtime is much more cost effective. And we will let you to hold on this thought and we will keep reiterating to this learning from COVID-19 that preventing the illness or incident is much more cost effective than treating it. The businesses today are evolving very rapidly. The requirements change very frequently. It is no new news that technology lies at the heart of the operations. And therefore the demand from technology is to be as agile and as resilient as possible. At the same time, for any business to be successful, it is imperative that we are able to control our cost. Technology therefore is on a continuous quest to improve its asset utilization, minimize CapEx and OPEX, and reduce as many unexpected failures as possible. So in today's session, we will try to focus on some of these quests, some of these challenges, and uh, we will look at some optimizations and processes that we have looked at to solve some of these problems. So to set the agenda for next 30 minutes, we will start with observing how DevOps is structured across industries and organizations today, and moving on to some of the challenges that we see in the current process, moving on to a few case studies and pilots that we have looked at for optimizing the current process and trying to address some of the challenges above. And finally, some of the key KPIs, how do we measure our modern DevOps processes are performing as expected and to our needs. So jumping right into the agenda, how is DevOps structured across industries and organizations? The diagram on my left depicts some more centralized IT operations where there is a central DevOps team trying to manage and monitor assets and resources for multiple application teams. Whereas on my right is a more decentralized IT operations where each application team has their own DevOps structure and they try to monitor and maintain their own assets. There are organizations which, are, which have a hybrid of these two models, but irrespective of how you have structured your DevOps today, there is one thing which is constant or similar across the industries, across the organizations or the business problem that you are trying to solve. How do we monitor these assets? So if we look at the entire DevOps infinity, we start with user stories, we try to prioritize and plan them into sprints. We go about developing these features 
Finally, moving on to testing. Once released into production, we gather customer feedback, and then we start monitoring some of the metrics to ensure that our services, our IT systems are up and running and are in healthy state. The IT operation systems emit thousands of metrics second by second. These are matrices like latency, throughput, error rate, utilization, but it is very challenging task for an engineer to be able to manually consume all this data and make sense of it. So the first stage of evolution was that we started establishing dashboards. We wanted a convenient way to visualize these matrices. That was the first phase of evolution. Obviously, the second phase of evolution came from there. We started understanding what is the normal behavior of our systems, what is the performance of these matrices based on the visualizations and, and studying these patterns manually over the period of time. That's how we started establishing thresholds for ourselves. We tried to understand our normal, the business criticality of the application that we are trying to monitor. We started establishing thresholds. And then the paranoia of our services going down led us to establish multiple alerts and a flurry of emails that today float around between our application teams and DevOps team. So this caused another problem of alert fatigue thousands of emails and health alerts being monitored by our application teams and DevOps teams to ensure that our IT systems are up and running and in a healthy state. So it feels like that the current tooling that we have for the entire monitoring falls insufficient to the challenges that we face, to the complexity of the applications that we are trying to develop today with the entire distributed architecture. To talk about some of these challenging uh, challenges in detail, the first one being the current process is reactive in nature. Our teams rely on thousands of alerts to monitor and maintain manual cognitive ability of our teams to correlate these alerts across multiple tools to come up with a root cause analysis. This often ends up creating a very challenging environment and an overwhelming environment to work in while our business critical applications are already down. The second challenge that we would want to discuss is the cost and scale of our IT operations today. While our infrastructure has become very scalable uh, with the entire adoption of cloud journey, we can spin up thousands of machine uh, on demand for our application, but our processes scalable enough remains a big question. Businesses have to do continuous investment into workforce as we automate more and more complex processes, as we introduce more complex applications and systems uh, into this entire architecture. So while we have very scalable infrastructure, our processes might not be as scalable as we want. So third is uh, process efficiency. We rely on manual, manual monitoring of lot of lot of our matrices, dashboard and health alerts to ensure our processes are up and running. A lot of this time could have been spent on more critical business tasks. And therefore there is a lot of scope and improvement of our current processes. And the fourth and final challenge that we want to discuss today is limited insights. We have very good insights on how our application is performing today in present. What is the latency? What is the throughput? How are my services interacting with each other? What is the current utilization? But we have very limited insights into the future. How is my latency going to be from three months from now? How is my utilization going to be four months from now? We focus a lot on the present, but we have very limited insights into the future. Finally, there is definitely a lot of data and matrices that our IT operation produces today. How do we leverage all this data to overcome some, uh, some of these challenges? At this point, I would like to hand over to my co-presenter, Sakti, to talk more about it. Sakti, over to you. Thank you, Chandani. Looking at the data generated from business critical services and the revenue generation application and how it's been leveraged from the current process, the engineering teams and engineers sets alerts based on key matrices of the apps and services in quest to get notified in case of system not working as expected. As a standard practice, engineering team would create application dashboards to monitor metrics such as disk utilization, CPU utilization, 
latencies, throughputs, storage analysis, and so on and so forth. This is mainly due to paranoia around missing those alerts from the critical applications, forces the teams to set alerts, multiple alerts, causing storms of alerts in case of any incidents. This further complicates the overall incidents management process and often team has to undergo to the detailed log analysis on the multiple alerts to investigate the exact root cause of the incident. And the incident process tends to be time consuming and more reactive in nature rather than being proactive. But this doesn't solve the problem. We have tons of logs from systems seconds by seconds. And how can we utilize these historical data to analyze and address some of the key challenges and be proactive rather than being reactive? So we in Tesco wanted to pilot and see how to leverage our data points and make this whole process more proactive in nature. Using a model called CAR, a CAR model defines a set of processes to predict the problem and incident before it happens and recommend right actions in order to avoid future failures. There are three main pillars of CAR model. Collection, which is about collecting data and analysis and aggregation of these collected data using uh, doing a number crunching, using machine learning models to identify the behaviors of the system. And the last but not the least is about recommendation actions, basically on the uh, understood data or analyzed data, what are the right recommendations we can do. So let's see how overall architecture would look like to predict asset strategy. As we all know, there is always a constant change in the business and the new requirements to catch up highly volatile market to retain or increase the market share. The technology team faces a tremendous challenges from business to build and deliver new features early and often in a very reliable way at a greater speed with quality. How in Tesco we dealt this challenge using the above architecture. There are four key components in this architecture. Let me explain more in detail. A configuration is a very, very important task. This is mainly is to collect the required data from multiple resources and workloads across the on-premise infra as well as cloud infra. And this is done by a simple configurations in the system. The next key thing is about collecting those data. It is basically to ingest the configured workloads right, uh, use for, from the business critical applications and service logs into a large data store. And this can be done using a standard DB connector. The ingestion component takes care of it just reading the config file. This is mainly done as many application monitoring tool would persist log for only short duration. And it would be insufficient when we want to predict a system behavior changes or new patterns emerging out of it over a period of time. The third phase is about, or the third component is all about analyzing. This is, this is done by, by number crunching of the collected data and the aggregate and collected data from the multiple resources, aggregate it to create a feature or context or a label. And these label data are being further analyzed by machine learning models to identify issue patterns new behavior changes, signals of the systems, such as latency or throughput, security vulnerability, storage growth, resource utilization, to predict and recommend right action plans. The last phase is all about recommending and integration. The ML recommendations can be visualized by any standard BI tools to get more insights of the data. And the integration component can also be hooked up with the cloud or an on-premise operation center to automate the overall scalability needs of the business critical apps and services. Using this architecture in Tesco, we have run few projects on a pilot phase to predict our asset strategy. I would invite my co-speaker Chandini to speak about pilot one. Thank you, Sakti. So, the case study that we are going to discuss now is one simple example of how can we leverage some of these uh, modern processes to improve the process efficiency. Um, 
on the entire asset strategy today, and it focuses on disk and CPU utilization trend analysis. So the graph that you see on my screen is more than one year worth of data on utilization matrices of a disk that has been shared between multiple applications. So what we see over here is the graph, how, how the entire utilization has trended over the period of time. And what we wanted to see is how this utilization would look few months from now. How can we establish some of the predictive alerts around this disk and then transform these predictive alerts into prescriptive recommendations? If we take a look at how this entire disk is monitored and maintained today across organizations, Let's say this disk runs into some issues or the utilization is full. We would receive multiple alerts because now multiple services are impacted with the downtime. And then our engineering and DevOps teams start analyzing these health alerts. They start under understanding all the logs around it to, identifying, uh, to identify the common underlying root cause of problem. Once they have identified the root, pro, uh, root cause, they go about communicating to all the stakeholders, get necessary approvals, and finally allocate more space and try to bring the services back up and running. And they have to do all this analysis while the business critical application is down. This often creates a very challenging and overwhelming environment also for our teams to work in. Right. So this is a process which happens now. What we are saying is, let's say we could study this historical pattern and run a simple regression on this data. The line that you see, the blue line that has been extended over, what we learned from this regression is that by November 2021, we would have utilized the 100% capacity on this disk and we would run, have run into a failure situation, which we want to completely avoid. So by September 2021, we would have raised a predictive alert for our DevOps teams and application teams to provision more capacity on this disk or replace it with a disk with a higher, higher capacity. They can review that recommendation, take the necessary action, allocate more space. And then we rely on this yellow alert only as a contingency plan if this alert was somehow missed. But we definitely want to avoid this downtime altogether or running into this failure situation altogether. Let's take a look at mean time to resolution in this new process. What happens is you have a forecast. That forecast generates a prescriptive recommendation. The team analyzes the logs and the recommendation, takes a call to allocate more, more space, and this entire process completes in seven minutes. If it is a very trivial system, you can even automate this entire process and reduce the time further. Compare this to the earlier process that we talked about, where the application had gone down and we were trying to allocate more space and try to recover from this from the downtime that reactive process takes in our experience in production easily 60 minutes today and sometimes even more the 53 minutes in the meantime to resolution that we have saved over here can then be utilized by our engineering and application teams on the next innovative business feature that we want uh, them to focus on. We definitely want to leverage some of these processes to take away that mundane task of monitoring and resolving the alerts to be handled by AI and ML so that they can focus on more business critical tasks. This is only one simple example. We can run such trend analysis on multiple matrices like memory, latency, et cetera. But this was just one example we have uh, also done some analysis around how can we improve our cost forecast and I'll hand over back to Sakti to talk more about it. Thank you, Chandri. There is always an ask from business to have better visibility on the value proposition of the product delivered by engineering teams, right? In Tesco, the next pilot we have tried is on cost, basically to predict and analyze to demonstrate the, the cost model or certain parameters using machine learning models. We have mocked the data to show and tell how an engineering team can leverage this model to control over the spend on the infrastructure and provide better visibility on the variance part, that is budgeted cost with this actual cost. Using this graph, let me explain more in detail. To talk more in detail, 
the red line in the graph, this is the actual value spent on the infrastructure and the blue line depicts the budgeted line, the budget allocated for the infrastructure for any given project. And the third is about green line is a value proposition of the product, which is yielded on sprint after sprint. In an ideal world, the red line and the blue line would coincide each other or go hand in hand. However, in real world scenario, they're not the same. And often teams end up spending more than the budget amount. This is mainly due to a couple of reasons. A under utilization of resources or the, the improper sizing of resources across the, the, this variance. The overall objective of this pilot is to forecast cost spend ahead of cost spend analysis and provide a report or, uh, or give visibility to the engineering team ahead of a time and give better control to the engineering team. So uh, this is the main intent of this project or pilot project to, to, uh, to give a more visibility to the engineering team to understand their infrastructure and how they are spending it. There are other use cases which we tried. The third pilot project which we tried is on proactive monitoring. The main objective of this pilot is a improve alert anomalies deduction. That is true versus fault verific alert verification, reduce redundant alerts notification from the systems and services. These are the two main pain main pain points we want to solve. In Tesco, we piloted the solution to solve using correlation model, quantifying the, that is quantifying the degree of similarity of two or more related signals emitted from the multiple tools or a framework or a platform deployed. Any typical backend services hosting would, would be hooked up by a bunch of monitoring tools to detect the system anomalies at every crucial point. Right? So to, to name few, it may varies from organization to organization and infrastructure monitoring or network monitoring or security monitoring vulnerability basically, application monitoring, disk monitoring, container monitoring, database monitoring, and so on and so on. You have a big list and we host any services which is on the cloud or on-prem to track and identify the system health. So to name few, the tools and monitors for infra, either Azure monitor or a cloud watch or app dynamics, or if it is on-premise hosting, using server monitoring tool, data logs for a network to identify the traffic and package and size, Structural vulnerability using NASAs or sync or trivi or application monitoring can be a run scope or, or, a, or an app dynamics, um, a distributed tracing using Zepkin, Jagger. There are so many tools are available to explain or capture the signals from the system, right? In case of any incidents, right, there are alerts, floods of alerts from these systems and tools. And we want to bundle the idea here is to how do we bundle all the related signal, system signals, and aggregated to create a single contextual view for the engineering team to understand this all is towards one single issue, right? And recommend a run book to optimize the current process efficiency, like true versus fault alerts verification, new signals added from the systems, more after a feature release, and many more. So this is this is this is this is a pilot which you have done. The graph or the 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 document what you're seeing on the left hand side is a bunch of critical alerts or health signals to uh, are being captured from the microservices which we have hosted on our cloud platform. And then on the right hand side, what we I, what we are able to come up with using the, the proactive monitoring using machine learning models, we were able to identify and link those alerts, multiple alerts to one single to give contextual views and also prepare very important a run book to our operation center to automate this process completely. Yeah, so that's that's the whole intent of this project. There are other many use cases can be tried on the predictive asset strategy. And to talk more about that, of those use cases and very important about KPIs, would invite my co-speaker, Chandani here. Thanks, Sakti. So uh, like Sakti mentioned, there is a lot more that we can try out in this space. I think AI ops really shines and brightens in all the areas where humans face a lot of challenges. That is analyzing a lot of data and we certainly have a lot of logs and a lot of matrices from the IT operation setup that we have today. 
So to name a few use cases, we can run log pattern analysis and identify any anomalies, any abnormal signals from our business critical applications. We can run health alert analysis, try to classify uh, these health alerts, try to run book them, try to group these alerts together. We can run security vulnerability reduction. Security definitely is one of the most important or the top business priority across organization and industries today. Fourth one being cohort analysis, again, identify in the current distributed architecture that almost um, most of the organizations have started to follow today. There are thousands of services, multiple instances running. AI can definitely do a good job at identifying any anomalies with the configuration, with the application versions that are deployed. And finally, the end goal is to definitely accelerate automation. Well, there are multiple use cases which can augment our current monitoring tools to optimize our processes. I think the key over here is to identify what is the burning or the most challenging problem that your business or the organization is, is struggling with, and then to try prioritize some of the use cases that you want to solve and then try to run pilots. I think that's what has helped us to share our experience but uh, before this can become a widespread adoption across the organization, across the industries, and we move to industry 4.0, there are definitely challenges that we uh, have seen and we feel that need to be addressed for its widespread adoption. The first one being silos. So like Sakti talked about, there are network teams, there are security teams, there are application teams. All these teams are together trying to monitor and maintain the health of the same application. How do we bring these silos together towards a common goal of improving the monitoring and improving the resiliency of the application? It becomes even more challenging in the organization where there are thousands of members in the team. And then, the, then these teams are um, not monitoring just one application, but multiple applications. Also, there are incoherent tools like Sakti talked about, AppDynamics, Zeppelin, RunScope. So all these teams are using different tools and applications to monitor the health of the system. The data format, the retention policies of these tools is quite different. How do we standardize and normalize all this data into a standard structure and then try to establish dependencies between them? It sounds simple, but it's a humongous and a very challenging task. And moving on to the third challenge that we have seen, continuous updates. Businesses are evolving very rapidly. We are all working in agile environment. Uh, requirements change too frequently. There are new uh, assets being introduced into our infrastructure and applications day in and day out. How do we differentiate the new signals from these new assets versus the uh, abnormalities in the system? How do we feed back the data into our models and keep evolving it over the period of time with how as our systems continue to evolve? So it requires definitely a lot of maintenance. And finally, the recommendations are as good as our data is. So it's very important that we have good data sources and the quality of data is good to be able to come up with recommendations. Otherwise we might come up with false recommendations that might increase the problems for our team. So we definitely want to avoid that situation. So these were some of the challenges, but once they are conquered and we've moved to industry 4.0 with a widespread adoption of some of these modern DevOps processes, how do we measure the success of uh, these processes and stay on track towards the goal. So a few KPIs that we have looked at, the first one being accuracy of predictive algorithms and prescriptive recommendations. We want to understand how many alerts were true versus false alerts, how many times incidents seep through the cracks and actually end up happening and we could not predict it. So what is the accuracy of these algorithms? Second one being availability, reliability, resiliency. The end goal of this entire exercise is to improve these three matrices. AI and ML is just a tool that is augmenting our current framework to improve these three parameters. So how have these parameters trended over the pe period of time? Uh, defines how successful are these algorithms in augmenting our current tools. Third is mean time to resolution and alert count. So two major challenges in our current setup. Alert fatigue, because there are thousands of alerts, 
and the second is mean time to resolution it takes time for the teams to analyze what has gone wrong what are the logs what are the health alerts what are the matrices and dashboards saying how do we reduce that mean time to resolution to solve an incident while a business critical application is down how do we come up with more prescriptive recommendations and as much data as we can give to our teams to improve our resolution times fourth being cost control uh, forecast accuracy so like sakti talked about how we are trying to forecast and control our cost much ahead in time how many times have been we able to actually forecast that we are digressing the budgeted cost and how early can we get the understanding of the variance and take corrective actions to control our cost fifth one being devops and engineering teams efficiency we definitely want our teams to focus on more challenging business critical task and we want to take away some of the pain points of manually monitoring and maintaining these systems so uh, fifth one again how how well are we able to address this pain point of our teams and and take some of these challenges away so i think uh, as we come to conclusion uh, i would want to say that it is one thing to migrate our entire infrastructure to cloud but it is completely another thing to be able to very optimally maintain and monitor these assets and uh, prevent the incidents from happening and reiterating to the covid-19 example that we started with preventing the incident is much more cost effective than addressing the incident post the downtime so i would like to say stay proactive stay healthy and thanks a lot for hearing us out today thank you for giving us your time thank you